revelations that I've had in the last month is just how increasingly important creating content and having a consistent social media presence for your flower shop is. I've even gotten to the point where I'm beginning to realize that even if you have a physical retail shop, that like this device, this hunk of plastic <laughs> is also something that needs to be reflective of your flower business. And I was looking at our website statistics the other day and noticing that more than half of the people that visit our website are on their phone. And I also know that as time goes by, that number is going to continue to increase, which is to be expected because e-commerce is the fastest growing part of the floral design industry. But coming with that is the continued expectation, the continued demand that we as business owners, we as floral designers have a system in place where we can consistently create content so that our business can keep showing up on social media. And this is something that I completely overlooked in the beginning because I was like, I'm too busy. I don't have time to do this. And I was watching all the like young hipster girls. <laughs> Except I've begun to realize, and it really dawned on me quite a few years ago, and I am doubling down on this in 2023, just in terms of social media is a necessary part of a business. And it could be that you quite literally grow your business, you increase your sales and you increase your profitability in your flower business by showing up on social media more consistently. But the other thing that I know is that we don't have an abundance of time. Our time as floral designers is our single most important asset. So I have learned quite a few things about how to efficiently create content and not make it feel like such an epic struggle. And I thought it could be really helpful if I walked you through my process. And as always, feel free to take any part of this that you like. So much of it for me is just putting like two or three very specific systems in place that then make the rest of the content production process process so much better. So if you are a person who feels like you're struggling to sort out Instagram, you know you need to be posting, but you have no idea what to post, and you're like, Kathleen, tell me all the things. My friend, you are in the right place. So the biggest mindset shift to make when it comes to you presenting your flower business on Instagram is stop worrying so much about posting finished designs. And yes, we need to have a very curated, very premium, very lovely Instagram feed. But one of the greatest advantages that we have as floral designers is that our work by nature is fascinating to human beings. People have no idea what is required to create what looks like a very simple vase arrangement. People don't know the difference between a rose and a carnation. People have no idea where your flowers even come from. So being able to use your Instagram content, being able to use your social media content as a way to educate your customers on the service that you provide, on the expertise that you have, is something that just changes the game in terms of making Instagram easy. And because Instagram is prioritizing reels, because video content is so important to Instagram and social media in general, one of the things that I have found super helpful is to plan ahead just a tiny little bit. And I'm not even saying this needs to be anything like epic, like TV production shoot, video production shoot situation. It's like, okay, what days am I receiving flowers? Thursday, Monday. I'm going to make sure that before I start processing my flowers that I have my tripod set up and that I have my battery charged on my phone and I test the lighting and I set it up and I just put a time lapse together. There are so many different things that we can do in our businesses and so many different time lapses that you can capture that for me, one of the things that's changed the game in terms of being able to show up on Instagram way more consistently is having a great content library. So things like time Time lapses of installations, time lapses of you processing your product, time lapses of you actually designing or real time video of you designing. And we're not even talking these things need to be like minutes long. Like your average reel is somewhere between three seconds and like 30 seconds. So by the time you edit it together, you actually don't need that much content. But this little bit of pre-planning and thinking about, okay, the ebb and flow of your week, what is it that you could actually record and then save to your content library? so that when you do sit down and actually sit to create your content, it's a way easier process. With that, I also have made the decision that I don't create 
create content and capture content on the same day. Instead, I allow that like process, that rhythm of capturing content consistently. So setting up time lapses, getting your camera set up if you're making a design or writing cards or doing an installation, doing computer work, like every single step in this process. If you're looking through your seed catalog, if you're ordering Dahlia tubers, like it's so valuable to being able to charge a premium for our work when our customers understand the work that goes into every single design. So it's that to us as the designer to be able to show our customer everything that goes on behind the scenes. And because there's a lot that you do behind the scenes, that means that there's a huge amount of content that you can capture. So I love this idea of just once or twice a week, you're gonna set up your camera, you're gonna put it on time-lapse, and you're just gonna capture 20 seconds or 30 seconds of footage. But you're not in that moment then going to sit down and actually edit your reel, but instead just build that habit of capturing content consistently so that when you get to the part in the process where actually creating the reels, you have an abundance of content to choose from. Two other rules that I like to kind of break when it comes to social media. And the first one is you don't have to post in real time. You are using Instagram as a way to grow your flower business, which is called marketing. <laughs> and advertisements are not created in real time. There is a full production schedule and a shoot that goes around it. So when it comes to you creating your content in your flower business, this isn't you like documenting your journey or you kind of saying like, this is exactly what I did on Monday and then this is what I did on Tuesday. It's like, no, I'm here to capture my customer's attention, helps them understand what's possible and then get them to my website so that they order flowers. Drop the expectation that anything has to be posted in real time. And remember, you're here to like lead the way with your clients and customers and just make it easy for them to order from you. And the second thing is do not hesitate to repeat yourself. You can repurpose content. You can repeat captions. You can talk about the same thing day in and day out. The most important thing to remember is that every new day, there's a whole new group of customers who are just about to find out about you. So they don't know that yesterday you talked about the difference between a rose and a peony. They have no idea that a month ago you talked about hydrangea being in season and how to dry your own hydrangea. Like they have no clue because they are not paying enough attention. So this whole idea of not having to post in real time and it's okay if you repeat yourself. I love using old footage from like three or four years ago, even three months ago, even six months ago. It just gives you so much more flexibility and freedom and it makes the whole production process so much faster. So by separating out the actual content capture from the content production, I find that process way more efficient than thinking, oh crap, I should post something to Instagram today, going out and trying to capture a photo of it or some video footage of it, hating it, trying to be like, well, I guess something is better than nothing and then not being sure about what to write in the caption and then just wanting to poke yourself in the eye with a hot skewer. Because that was my process. <laughs> For years, that was my process until I started to realize there's an easier way to do this. So that idea of holding out the actual content capture as part of your weekly creative process, just make that something that you or something your team does every single week. Doesn't need to be glamorous, doesn't need to be fancy, just making sure that you're continuing to capture content in your flower business. Then what I do is once a week, I will sit down with my phone and I will jump on and I will go, okay, my goal, my commitment is I want to post three reels a week. I am not super attached attached to a specific schedule. I'm not super attached to having it exactly be like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but that is kind of my goal. But once a week, I will sit down and I will just create three reels. It's been so helpful to just say, you know what, Kathleen, just create three reels, use this existing content, go in, and I don't edit with anything fancy. I literally just use the Instagram app. I edit in the Instagram app. I just use the music in the Instagram app, and I just write the text on the screen in the Instagram Instagram app. I do, and all of you guys that are part of the Flower Boss Academy, you also have access to my cheat sheet of 30 done for you Instagram captions. So I just use those captions. And when I say I repeat myself, I repeat myself a lot. So that through this process, the actual time I spend doing the production of the reels and scheduling of the reels, I can get done in about half an hour. That process for me is so much better than the panic inducing craziness that we all like to have when we're like, I know I should be posting, but I just don't know what to post. But with a little bit of pre-planning, a little bit of thinking ahead, and a little bit of experimentation, it actually becomes incredibly easy. And dare I 
say it could even be a little bit of fun. So I hope that that's been helpful. As I said before, feel free to take any part of this process and make it your own. And as always, if you want me to do a follow-up video on this, if you want me to go into more depth, into more detail, please don't hesitate to ask. And as always, please have the most amazing week and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye for now. Thank you.